and welcome to DCU TV's very first DCU TV News. I'm Claire Prenty. DCU's Raising for Animal Welfare Sock held a Holofest last week in Albert College Park. The colourful event had everything from henna art to a colour run. Anna Kazadojava was there to join in on all the fun. Three, two, one, go! One of this year's biggest inter-society events, known as the Holy Festival of Colors, took place in DCU today, the 25th of March. The event was organized by ArtSoc in conjunction with Friends, Raw, Indian and Psych Societies. The tickets for the event were sold out in under two hours and over 1,000 euro was raised for animal welfare. The next probe, we're going to do it five minutes. Five minutes for the next probe. Well, I was backpacking around Australia with my brother last, well, last summer and we saw one going on. There was 10,000 people going and it was absolutely amazing. It was all for charity. And since then, I came back from the summer, started DC Raw and we've been planning it for seven months. So it was more just having fun but raising for charity at the same time, trying to combine the two and getting people to enjoy raising money for fundraising. So. This particular event, it's Kildare Animal Foundation and Holly's Horse Haven. Raw Society, we have numerous charities such as DSPCA, Dogs Trust, Blue Cross, Paws, etc. But um, for this event, we really wanted to help them. So we've raised a ton of money for them, which they desperately need. Oh, it was so good. It's like nothing I've ever done before. Yeah, it was really interesting. Like I've always wanted to do the run, so it was just to get a chance to do this was really fun. Yeah, the event was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, you know, you always see pictures of that kind of thing, like in India and stuff, and it's just crazy to be part of it. It's so much fun. Holi is the festival, like a lot of festivals we usually play this uh, thing in India, in back in our country. So uh, this event is always nice, even if it's like at any place, any time. Upon arrival, students received a wristband, three bags of powder and a bottle of water. Additional bags of powder were sold for one euro to raise even more money for the chosen charities. UCD and Trinity held similar events in early March, but DCU topped it with having a henna artists and a before and after photo booth. Anna Kazadoiva, DCU TV News. Every year, DCU students travel all the way to the Crown Plaza in Santry to celebrate all things to do with society life at their annual Society Awards Ball. Ashling Lachlan went down last Wednesday to see what all the excitement was about. The annual event is the one time of year where the work of the best societies is recognised. With 26 categories, each society gets the opportunity to showcase their best achievements. Winners on the night included Cancer Sock for Best New Society, Cochney Callahan for Most Promising Fresher and MPS for Best Academic, Cultural and Social Society. This is a fantastic win for MPS, earning them a place in the BIX Awards in the coming weeks. Hundreds of dedicated society members were in attendance as they were wined and dined until the dance floor was opened by DCU's very own DJ Damo. The annual event held in the Crown Plaza is the one time of the year where the best work of the societies is recognised. Pop the Cherry Comedy is a comedy group set up by DCU students. The aim of the group is to give people an opportunity to try stand-up comedy for the first time. The Pop the Cherry performances have become very popular among DCU students. Jordan Cavanaugh went along to their fourth gig to see what all the fuss is about. Here are the over Pop the Cherry Comedy for its fourth installment. It is a stand-up comedy event that was started by DCU students and has grown in its success with every show. My name is Emmett Jones. And I'm a fussy eater. <laughs> and so is my boyfriend. Good night. <laughs> and we caught up with Emmett Jones to find out how he finds performing and how Pop the Cherry all started. Very comedy. Yeah, no, last time was good. Last time was good. The audience was great. Um, it was great to be in the old bar. It was kind of like a natural, natural progression from the intimate mess. And then uh, the way that we set it up with the blankets around with not the blankets but the drapes around and how the the basically it was set up in a Vicar Street then followed by the couch at home style with space mass at the back. Yeah it just it kind of it worked. It was it was a nice way of doing it and the audience really up for it and everyone did well. It was good. Pop the cherry started basically Pop the Cherry started from um uh, Dwayne Dugan David Atkinson and Niall Farrow were in a bar one day and uh, decided it's a really good idea to start doing comedy in DCU because it's not really something that's done. And uh, 
then Dave kind of took it upon himself to go and start organising Pop to Cherry One and contacted me and contacted a few others and just generally kind of it spitballed from there and uh, ended up being as good as it is today. This is an event that always guarantees a laugh. I'm Jordan Kavanagh, DCU TV News. Expose's Lisa Cannon visited DCU last week to talk to students about her career and give them advice on how to break into television. I went along to see what she had to say. I'm here in the Henry Grattan, where DCU's Journal Society and DCU's Style Society have come together to host a talk from Expose's Lisa Cannon. Um, what's the secret to your success? Oh, I think that's a hard question um, because success is always evolving. But I suppose the secret is that I just worked really hard and um, did a lot of stuff for free and um, built up a lot of experience over a period of time and um, put together a really good show and I knocked on loads of doors and just didn't give up. Really pushed and pushed them because that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So it's like anything. If you fancy someone and you really want them, you have to just go after them and whatever the consequences are. So be it. So whenever the cards fell, that's what happened to me. And luckily, I got in the door. She spoke to the students for over an hour and gave them advice on journalism and how to break into the world of television. They're lively and they're bubbly and they're excited and they're interested and they're passionate. They usually go further. And you've done loads of interviews over the years. Loads, yeah. Which has been your favourite interview? Um, well, I kind of a toss up. If we're talking about the females first, I loved Beyonce. I loved her because she was warm and she was kind and, you know, she was really touchy feely as well. I mean, she loved women and she's very supportive of women and their strengths. And I think as a person, she's quite unique. As a performer, she's exceptional, you know. And then as an interviewer, she was just really fun. And she talked about her dad being annoying and she talked about, you know, wanting to, you know, evolve to an even greater human being. And she's very spiritual, yet she's really down to earth. So for me, she kind of had the whole package. And then for men, well, it has to be Brad Pitt because I waited so long to interview him. It was 20 years. Um, not knowing, you know, obviously <laughs> loved him and fancied him. I know I 20 years, but, you know, he was always on my wall. And, and when I finally got to meet him, he didn't disappoint. And that to me was like the best moment ever. This is Claire Prenti for DCU TV News. DCU's Media Production Society held their version of Big Brother. Students from 13 societies took part. With all the usual twists and turns you'd expect from Big Brother, the event was a big success. Dara McGowan went to have a look. On Wednesday, March 25th, DCU TV teamed up with Bank of Ireland to air their second 24-hour broadcast event of the year, as the venue was transformed to host DCU's Big Brother. Members of the Media Production Society took on behind-the-scenes roles, which boasted a large social media campaign online, and topped off with exceptional graphics by Deputy Station Manager Glenn Griffin. The event went on overnight, as contestants were kept awake with various tasks from the man upstairs, Big Brother himself, Own Shahan. I don't think I was too brutal at all. I think I was honest. I think I was straightforward. I think I was, I suppose you could use the word blunt in certain uh, circumstances. But I do believe at the start of the show we outlined the rules of the show quite clearly to anybody and any time I might have come across as harsh or anything like that, it was mainly to do with just a breach of the rules. How much preparation went into DCU TV's Big Brother? Um, yeah, there was a lot of preparation. Basically for about a month or two uh, prior to Big Brother we kind of met uh, every Monday for an hour just to make sure all the plans were in place. Um, just before committee meetings we'd have a separate Big Brother meeting. We did that for the broadcast too so we were kind of used to it. But um, yeah, there was a lot of preparation, just a lot of work, just like kind of just a small thing, just like getting sponsorship, uh, coming up with little ideas in the house, you know, uh, recording the VTs, a lot of work went into that. Contestants each represented a society in DCU, varying from rag to circus arts to photo sock and many others. The show took many turns throughout, resulting in contestants to take part in regular dance-offs and even a wedding which featured an appearance from Father Emmett Jones. I caught up with the event's runner-up contestant, Lisa Kirby. Up until like the last two hours, that's when I got tired. And then I was like, okay, get me out of here. But other than that, I absolutely loved it. I had great fun and I actually loved everyone in there and I got on with everyone really well, so I was really happy with that. What was your favourite moment of you took in the house? Um, like, I have to give a shout out to Barbie for making it. Like, when she came out with that bed and a toy Barbie, like, to be honest, I was like, dodge, but like, you actually made a class. And, oh, there's so many highlights. 
All in all, this was one of DCU TV's most successful broadcasts to date. Dara McGowan, DCU TV News. It's always heavier than you expect. Yeah. <laughs> DCU Drama held the very first society roast in the venue this month. The event gave representatives from various societies a chance to let other societies know exactly what they thought about them. Glenn Murphy was there to watch the action unfold. The DCU Drama Society's Comedy Roast took place on Tuesday the 25th of March in the venue. The roast was held to help raise money for the Society. This is so they can afford to put on a run of shows in the Helix at the beginning of April for their Broadway musical Spring Awakening. Six Societies took part in an evening of cheap jibes, venomous insults and general slagging. Music, Drama, Rag, Sober, MPS and Dance Societies all chose one representative each. The representative then had five minutes to tell as many jokes as possible at the other Society's expenses. Shane O'Mahony for RAG, Sinead McCool for Dance, Sean Walsh for Music, O'Sheen for MPS, Mark Young for Drama, and Sligo Steve Hallinan for Sober Sock were the performers on the night. Uh, we're performing in the DCU Drama Roast, which is an event where basically there are six members of different societies from DCU uh, pitted against one another to uh, deliver the, most, the best put downs to one another to shatter each other's confidence. DCU Drama Society's next production will be the Broadway musical Spring Awakening taking place in the Helix next week on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday nights. I'm going to continue to drink uh, in the hope that by the end of the night I find him or is attractive. So I I'm Glenn Murphy for DCU TV News. <laughs> DCU Boxing held the Dublin City Cup in the venue this month for the very first time. Jordan Kavanagh was there to find out more. <laughs> DCU hosted the Dublin City Boxing Tournament last weekend. DCU Boxing, along with St Saviour's Box Club, welcomed other clubs from across Ireland and the UK to the event. The event was held in the venue and it is the first time that DCU has hosted it. I met with Terry Keegan, the chair of DCU Boxing, to find out how DCU fighters did and how the overall, how the tournament went. So uh, it went really good and uh, St Saviour's and Warwick won the Dublin City Cup combined because they both won the same amount of points. So we were really happy with that. <laughs> Basically, we brought um, four travelling teams from England, Warwick, and London. Um, then we have teams from Derry and teams from Fermanagh, and then a lot of clubs from uh, Dublin. So, uh, Saturday went really well. We had uh, five boxers in, we had three wins and two losses. And uh, then today we had two boxers in, but sadly, neither decisions went our way. But obviously, it's a boxer at a club level, not at a college level, so it's a higher standard for them, so it's really good. Uh, I'm Jordan Kavanagh, this is DCU TV News. Members of DCU's handball club travelled to America to compete in a competition this month. Barry Scanlon caught up with the players to see how they got on. Anne Vlain, Jane Club, Lee Rodleva, DCU, Analg America, Laglacu Parch, Agriu, Donda, Kalistja, Lee Rodleva, Bortland, Snestech, Intihe. The Gray, Marin and Comortis are for Trio A, and the actor McLean O'Hear her are for the Crinia, a torch A or Portland. Our handle being McLean O Canada, O Mexico, O Chapin, Agus O Vergehen, La Fecilon. Hog Ashley and O'Keefe, Agus Nee Farrell, Ben Noalia La, Erin Hingle, Agus Dubulchin the Man, Agus Hokino Dali, Agus Corey Fay, Ben Noalia Lafa. I run single Agus Dubulcha Navar to Artwa Bal Egan Club for letter Ever a tag may do O Kin Go Kin Blaine. That's all for this edition of DCU TV News. Thanks to all our reporters and crew. Our next broadcast will be in two weeks. Thanks for watching.